Hi everyone! So in my last couple of videos, I tried something new by making video essays. They seemed to do pretty well, and I enjoyed making them, so I thought I'd try making another one, this time about video games. In case you're worried, this isn't some sick April Fool's prank, where I read off a 4 minute introduction before leaving you with 36 minutes of credits. What kind of cruel monster would do that? No, I will actually be discussing why Mario Odyssey is genius, but first, I should probably explain what Mario Odyssey is. Mario Odyssey, also known as 9001 A Mario Odyssey, is the 27th live-action segment of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show and aired on October 10th, 1989. The segment is a spoof-slash-adaptation of the 1968 classic 2001 A Space Odyssey, which follows the crew of the United States spacecraft Discovery 1 when HAL 9000, the computer that controls most of Discovery 1's operations, malfunctions. Also, murderous apes, psychedelic light shows, and giant space babies. In 9001 A Mario Odyssey, programmer and friend of the Mario Brothers, Albert Einstein, gifts them the HAL 9001 computer and pizza machine. Yo, uh, Al, I feel uh, kind of stupid talking to a machine, you know. At first, Luigi thinks talking to a machine is kind of stupid, which is obviously ridiculous. Right? But quickly warms up to it when Einstein introduces the brothers to its pizza-making capability. Einstein instructs Hal to make a pepperoni pizza with no anchovies or fried eggs, informing the brothers that if you don't specify, Hal will put them on the pizza, and Hal immediately produces one, much to the delight of Mario. I do I like computers! Einstein tells the brothers that Hal never makes mistakes, before leaving and telling them to call him if they have any questions. Mario and Luigi get right to ordering pizzas from Hal, ordering a sausage pizza and eventually ordering some weirder pizzas, such as a hamburger pizza. However, when Mario orders a bologna pizza, Hal begins to malfunction, producing a golf pencil pizza, a nurse shoe pizza, a dog biscuit pizza, and a popcorn pizza. At this point, Luigi thinks it would be best to unplug Hal, but Hal simply will not allow that. I'm sorry, Mario, but I cannot allow that. He said it! He said the thing! Hal instructs Mario and Luigi to gaze into his eye, putting them in a trance-like state before he commands that they eat all of the pizzas he has produced. Just then, Einstein bursts in, telling the Mario brothers that he forgot to give them the bill. When Einstein sees what has happened, he frantically pulls out Hal's cords and succeeds in shutting Hal down. When Mario and Luigi come to, Einstein apologizes, saying that they would have eaten Hal's horrible pizzas. The segment ends with Mario asking, What horrible pizza? before beginning to eat the popcorn pizza. Now you may be thinking that this segment, while an at-best mildly funny parody of 2001 A Space Odyssey, is definitely undeserving of the title of genius, and you wouldn't be alone. Like much art, such as the paintings of Van Gogh, the writings of Kafka, or the musical arrangements of Bach, the true genius of 9001 A Mario Odyssey was unappreciated in its time, and I feel it is my job as an analyst to prove definitively that it is a genius commentary on mankind's relationship with technology. I initially wanted to do an entire video on 2001 A Space Odyssey, but after learning that the film is almost two and a half hours long, I decided that the film was too short and didn't have enough material to dedicate an entire video to. However, I will be going over some of the film's themes here, so that I may compare them to 9001 A Mario Odyssey. One may say that, at its core, 2001 A Space Odyssey is a film about technology and humankind's relationship with it. The discovery of the alien monolith at the beginning of the film causes the man-apes to realize that they can use broken bones as tools to hunt with and weapons to murder with. The iconic moment in the film when the man-ape throws his bone tool into the air and as it spins it cuts to a spacecraft mid-flight represents the progress in technology over thousands of years. The chaotic frenzy of the man-apes howling and murdering each other transitions to the controlled beauty of fluorescent lit rooms and spaceships dancing among the stars, as what was once simply a way to defend your territory transforms into what allows humanity to travel the cosmos. The second section of the film ends when Dr. Haywood Floyd and his colleagues travel to a hidden moon crater where another monolith has been excavated and, after Floyd touches it, the slab emits a loud and painful sound. This part of the film, and book of the same name, was inspired by Arthur C. Clarke's short story The Sentinel, about the discovery of an alien object buried under the surface of the moon millions of years ago, that, once humans had become technologically advanced enough to activate it, would send out a signal warning distant aliens of your existence. Our existence. 
Themes of technology are present yet again, as an ancient alien species uses technology, in the loosest sense of the word, to monitor humanity's technological progress and humanity becomes technologically advanced enough to activate the aforementioned sentinel slash monolith. In the third section, titled Jupiter Mission, the theme of technology reaches its climax when HAL 9000, the computer controlling most of the spacecraft's operations, malfunctions and begins killing the crew members. The beautiful multitude of shots showcasing the ship's docking procedures and its variety of buttons and computer screens contrast with the banality of the human crew. The human characters are purposefully underdeveloped and uninteresting, contrasting with Hal, the ship's computer, with his mysterious motives, the tragic pleading for his life before Dave shuts him down, I'm afraid, Dave. and the cute little song he sings after his system is restarted. Technology has stripped humankind of its humanity, and the literal machine has become the most human character. The final section of the film, titled Jupiter and Beyond the Infinite, follows the arrival of Dave's ship in Jupiter's orbit, where he discovers a third monolith. When Dave touches the monolith, it treats him to a Pink Floyd planetarium light show, before Dave is transported to a room with Baroque furniture and a glowing floor. Also, he's an old man now. I should probably have mentioned that. The monolith appears in the room, and Dave is transformed into the Star Baby. In the final shots of the film, the Star Baby, now able to travel vast distances without the assistance of technology, returns to Earth and turns to face the camera before the screen fades to black. This transformation, and the film as a whole, seems to suggest that while technology was critical in human evolution, the next step in human evolution will require overcoming technology and abandoning it, allowing ourselves to be reborn. 9001 A Mario Odyssey also serves as a clever commentary on humankind's relationship with technology, but in a way that is much more relevant in our modern age of computers, smartphones, and the internet. One of the ways it achieves this is through the characters' shifting relationships with technology. Luigi, being the scaredy cat of the family, is hesitant to allow the technology to make such large changes to his life, and Mario, being the more gung-ho of the brothers, is eager to allow the technology to make pizzas for him. I do I like computers! However, no matter how cautious Luigi is, both of the brothers are soon trapped in Hal's web of convenience, going to absurd lengths that would have been unimaginable just minutes ago. When Hal malfunctions and Luigi realizes just how ridiculous the scenario has become, he and Mario attempt to turn Hal off, severing their connection with the technology. <coughs> it's no use, Mario. We're just gonna have to pull Hal's plug. Okay, I'll keep you covered. All right. I'm sorry, Mario, but I cannot allow that. Both of you, gaze into my eye. However, Hal has taken on a mind of his own and, in one of the most brilliant scenes shown on television, Hal literally hypnotizes the brothers, bending their will to fit his needs. Once again, the technology has stripped humans of their humanity, leaving them the obeying automata. That is, of course, until Einstein comes in with the bill and saves them. I forgot something, your bill! Oh, Hal! You've gone not so... This scene is key to the genius of the episode, and I'd like to divert my attention to the character of Einstein for a moment to prove my point. In this episode, Albert Einstein appears to be the stand-in for what we now refer to as a tech daddy, an inventor figure such as Elon Musk, mythologized into some sort of technological genius. This is clear at the beginning of the episode when Einstein appears to be gifting the brothers this technological marvel in much the same way that the titan Prometheus gifted humanity with the knowledge of fire. However, this idea is quickly broken down, as Einstein's warning that you need to say no anchovies or fried eggs or how we'll put them on the pizza shows that Einstein knows of the invention's flaws, but decided to lie to the Mario brothers by telling them that Hal never makes mistakes. When Einstein returns at the end of the episode, it is revealed that Einstein was not simply gifting Hal to the Mario brothers, he was selling it to them. This scene perfectly demonstrates how humanity can only escape the ironclad grip of technology when their escape becomes beneficial to the people profiting off of said technology. This idea is largely absent from 2001 A Space Odyssey, and the fact that the episode is willing to recognize that the reason humanity's relationship with technology is so antagonistic is, in large part, because of the desire for profit means that, in some ways, 9001 A Mario Odyssey is cleverer than 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, one might point out that the beats of the story mimic almost word for word our modern relationship with computers, smartphones, and the internet. 
Mario and Luigi's differing viewpoints at the beginning mimic different people's viewpoints on technology, Luigi being your uncle that keeps telling you to get off of Facebook, and Mario being the coworker that keeps telling you to invest in Bitcoin. The promise of convenience that traps the Mario Brothers mimics how technologies prey on our desire for convenience. Hal's hypnosis of the Mario Brothers mimics just how much control technology has over our lives. Einstein's profit motive mimics how tech companies like Facebook deliberately design their products to be addictive to keep their users looking at as many ads as possible. And Mario eating the popcorn pizza at the end mimics the mindless consumers who hide their heads in the sand and continue using the technology. While this comparison is definitely apt, I do feel that saying 9001 A Mario Odyssey is an allegory for humanity's relationship with smartphones decades ahead of its time limits the episode's genius, which works on multiple layers. To decode another one of these layers, we have to ask ourselves a question. Why is the computer programmer that creates HAL 9001 named Albert Einstein? It couldn't be that the episode is saying the real Albert Einstein was one of the solely profit-driven tech daddies that the character in the episode represents, as the real Albert Einstein was a socialist that denounced the, quote, glorification of power and success in our present society, end quote, that the tech daddy archetype represents. While it is possible that the episode is using Albert Einstein as a stock mad scientist figure, most stock mad scientist figures are modeled after scientists like Gregor Mendel or Sigmund Freud, not Albert Einstein. I think that the reason they chose Einstein's name is, and this might sound a little crazy, but hear me out, because his discovery that energy and mass are interchangeable set the stage for nuclear weaponry. It certainly wouldn't be out of place, as themes of nuclear weaponry and war were present in 2001 A Space Odyssey, although it definitely wasn't the first Kubrick film to touch on it, nor was it the most overt. The iconic cut from the ape man's bone tool spinning in the air to a spacecraft mid-flight represents not just the progress of technology, but also of weaponry, as the satellite it cuts to is a nuclear launch platform, although it isn't explicitly stated in the film. The theme of territorial disputes also pops up several times throughout the film. First, when the man-ape uses the bone to reclaim the watering hole from a different tribe, again when Floyd verbally spars with his Russian counterparts, and finally when Dave and Hal fight for control of the spacecraft. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. When Dave disconnects Hal and ascends from technology, he also ascends from these territorial disputes, seeing the entire Earth as it truly is. No borders, no countries, just one pale blue dot that we all must share. This is made even clearer in the book. When Dave returns to Earth as the Star Child, he destroys all of the nuclear weapons orbiting the Earth. In a way, 9001 A Mario Odyssey also serves as a clever commentary on humankind's relationship with nuclear weapons, as one could draw parallels between the beats of its story and the story of nuclear weaponry just as easily as we did with cell phones. The problems with Hal being clear from the beginning mimics the many existential and ethical questions surrounding the existence of nuclear weaponry. The promise of convenience that traps the Mario brothers and Hal's hypnosis of the brothers mimics how humanity has come to believe that nuclear weapons are good and necessary for preventing the very war they could lead to. Einstein's profit motive mimics how weapons manufacturers profit off of producing nuclear weaponry, and Mario eating the popcorn pizza at the end mimics the many people who, even after being shown how nuclear weaponry can go horribly wrong, still believe it is necessary. 9001, A Mario Odyssey, is such a genius work of allegory that it is able to comment on war, capitalism, and humanity's relationship with technologies of the past the present, and the future. To the Mario, swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go to the Mario. Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go to the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. Come on now, just like that. Uh, hi. Thanks for watching my stupid little April Fool's joke all the way through. If you were disappointed that I didn't actually talk about Mario Odyssey, I am deeply sorry.
If you, for some reason, enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that other stuff real YouTubers tell you to do at the end of their videos. Before I go, I would like to thank the people who contributed a total of, as of when I'm recording this, 240 views to my two-part analysis of Pink Floyd's The Wall. I've spent a really long time on those videos, so it's nice to know that some people actually watched them. To those people, I will say that I plan on uploading more serious, and actually good, content to the channel sometime soon. Anyway, thanks for watching this mess of a video, and goodbye! I don't know, I got the strong urge to eat a nurse's shoe.